Hey, I wanted to talk about fasting. Um, I've never really heard this uh, explanation of fasting and why fasting is important. Um, currently, I've been uh, doing quite a bit of intermittent fasting, and what that is is a uh, all it is is I'm not fasting for you know like 24 hour periods of time or anything like that full days what I'm doing is just delaying when I eat you know after I wake up in the morning so um this um excuse me I'm leaving a customer house and I thought I knew where I was going. Okay, I think I'm good now. Um, yeah, I thought I knew where I was going and got thrown a curve, but I'm good. But, um, okay, yeah, I'm all the way good now. Yeah, I want to talk about that. I never heard it explained like I'm going to explain it. Um, how I understand, you know, like why it's important. Um, but, uh, fasting gives your body, your, you know, the organs of your body a break. You know, that's how I see it. Um, so you figure, you know, from the time of your conception and your mother's womb, um, the organs of your body have been working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, every single year up until, you know, this present moment, if, you know, you're alive, um, nonstop, no breaks, right? Like, uh, you know, your heart can't take like a 10 minute break from pumping blood. Like, oh, I'm tired. I'm just going to, you know, not pump blood for five minutes. You know, your lungs can't stop functioning. Your kidneys can't stop functioning. Your liver can't stop functioning. Your brain can't stop functioning. You know, all these organs of your body, you know, your adrenals, you have all these different systems, your nervous system, your immune system, your circulatory system. You know, you got, um, you know, all these things going on in your body that, you know, need to function properly in order for you to have, you know, a good quality of life while you're here. Um, by good quality of life, I mean, I'm referring to good health, I'm meaning, you know, pain-free existence. A disease, a sickness and disease free existence. So, um, you know, just I was thinking about this one day and it was really blowing my mind and I started doing math. You know, my mom at the time of uh, me recording this, which it is January 8th, 2020, my mom is 80 years old. And so, you know, I was thinking about, you know, how her heart has been pumping blood, you know, for over 80 years. You know, she's 80 years on this earth, you know, once she was birthed, you know. But like I said, before that, you know, her heart was functioning while she was still in the womb pumping blood, you know. So you got at least probably about she's probably you know about 81 years and I did the math on how many times you know uh, and I don't remember the numbers but it's in like it's a mind-blowing amount of times that her heart has been beaten because on average it's somewhere I don't remember I'm not even gonna try to say but it's your heart just in one day your heart beats thousands of times just in one day um so i don't remember the, you know and you know 
they can only give you an average. So I took that average and multiplied it, you know, by um, 30. Well, I don't remember how I did it. But however, uh, however I did it, it's a lot. It, your heart is pumping blood a lot. It's beating a lot. It's, like I said, it's a mind-blowing amount. So um, as I thought about that, and I'm thinking about my own personal life, you know, I want to live a pain-free existence and a sickness and disease-free existence. So how do you do that? One, one of the ways is to you know feed your body properly um, I started thinking about digestion you know um, so your body um, one of your body's main functions is to digest the food and the liquids that you feed it different foods and liquids require different amounts of time to digest. Um, so if you, you know, they say meat, and this includes seafood, any type of meat can take up to two days to digest, for your body to digest. Um, whereas fruit, they say, takes up to 20 minutes to digest. And then you have, you know, things in between. You know, like veggies, vegetables take, I believe, up to 40 minutes to digest, up to an hour. And then, you know, you have different types of fruit and vegetables that can cause that number to vary. Um, but whatever the case, uh, you know, the bottom line is fruit and vegetables take much less time for your body to digest than meat, for example. So, in thinking about this whole thing, um, I was, you know, I started wondering, you know, how can I give the organs of my body a break? You know, I don't want to overwhelm them with so much work, they can't keep up, they become stressed out, and uh, as a result, you know, they start they, they stop functioning as they could. You know, they're not operating at peak performance. They're struggling to keep up with the workload I'm putting on them, you know, and now you start having problems. So I liken it to this, you know, say, you know, you're, you're working a job. Let's just say you, you have an office job. And so you come into work, sit down at your desk, and um, you know, probably like 30 minutes in, after being there, your boss comes by, drops a stack of papers on your desk, and uh, your boss says, you know, hey, I need these done uh, by the end of tomorrow, all right? And you're like, okay, cool, no problem. Boom, you got your work for the day and you got to, you know, the end of tomorrow to complete it. So you're working at a comfortable pace because you have plenty of time, you know, um, to complete your work, you know. So being able to work at a comfortable pace, your mind is at ease, you're not stressed out, you're not overwhelmed, you're, you know, you're relaxed, you're comfortable, you're having a great day, right? And let's say uh, a couple hours later, your boss comes in again with another stack of papers, another stack of paperwork. Say, hey, I need these done also by the end of tomorrow, right? And now you're like, okay. But you're like, man, you know, this is a lot of work, you know, and you can do it but it's a lot, you know, now you gotta pick up the pace a little bit. You can't be as relaxed as you were before, you know, um, you, 
might have been playing on your phone before, social media, just doing other things. Now you gotta pick up the pace a little bit, right? So then you go to break, you go to lunch, whatever, you come back from lunch. About 10 minutes after you get back from lunch, your boss comes in with another stack of papers, right? And your boss is saying, uh, boom, drops this other stack of papers on your desk, like I need these done also end of the morrow. Boom, now you got three stacks of papers on your desk. And now you're starting to feel a little pressure. You're starting to, you know, feel a little overwhelmed. You know, because now it's getting to a point where, hey, how am I going to get all this done? You know, now there's no no breaks. There's no like, you got to work. You know, um, you might even find yourself working through your next break trying to get all this stuff done you may start feeling a little overwhelmed by the amount of work that they want you to get done right and you know working at a much faster pace now um, and then you know a couple minutes before time for you to get off your boss comes in again with another stack of papers right it's like how am I supposed to get all this done I'm only one person like you're feeling really overwhelmed now and stressed out the pressure is definitely on you know now you might take a stack of papers home after work and work even after you get off in order to get all this work done now you're totally overwhelmed and stressed out and the pressure and all this you're not relaxed at all you may get angry, you know, all these other things. They don't pay me enough for this, blah, 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 whatever it is, right? And now you're working much longer than you're supposed to be working. Right? You're supposed to be off. You're taking paperwork home, just trying to get all this stuff done. You might be working through the night, get all this stuff done. So I think you get my point. So I liken that to, you know, how our, our bodies, our organs function, you know, so let's just say, you know, as I said, it takes, it takes up to two days for your body to digest meat, right? Let's say for breakfast, you wake up one morning for breakfast, you have steak and eggs. Boom, right? So it's going to take your body up to two days to digest that steak. Um, and so then, you know, for lunch, say like you go, to, you go out to eat somewhere and you get a, a steak sub, right? You really like steak. Right, boom. It's gonna take your body two days again to digest this. Now that's like that's the equivalent of like two stacks of paperwork, you know, on your desk, right? And then um, you're gonna you so let's say you snack between meals, which takes you know additional time for your body to digest, which is you know we'll just lump all your snacks throughout the day into one meal and say. It's gonna take, you know, an additional day for your body to digest all of these snacks that you're eating. You know, whether it's candy or cookies, potato chips, crackers, whatever it is, you're snacking throughout the day. And then dinner time comes around and say like you have chicken alfredo or something, you know. Um, again, it's meat. Even if it's fish, it's meat, you know. I believe that some fish would take less time, like maybe like something like salmon, would take less time to digest than a steak, but it could still take up to two days for your body to digest meat, no matter what it is, even, you know, seafood. So now, so this is like you just steadily stacking paperwork on the desk of your organs for your organs to complete. And this is just one day. This is, and, and really, like from dinner to the next day, that's not even a full day. So, say you eat dinner at 7 o'clock, boom, go to sleep, you wake up, because you got to be at work in the morning, you wake up at 7 in the morning, and, I don't know, you have like a chicken fajita or something, or you have bacon and eggs, or you have sausage and eggs and toast or whatever, you know. You're stacking more paperwork on the desk, right? 
and you just keep doing this and you're not giving whoa what the this idiot just stopped on the freeway in the middle of the freaking freeway and I'm thinking like he broke down or something. He not even broke down. He just ran. He, he's freaking working. But he stopped and why you can't pull over to the shoulder? I'd, I'd really like to shoot people like that. I really would, but there's laws and stuff. And I'm not talking about natural laws. I'm talking about spiritual laws. I don't want that stuff coming back on me. So, But in my perfect world, I would have shot him. And nothing would have, there would have been no consequences for it. And you know, that's, that's like super judgmental. I know. Like, but that's just how I feel. How I get over it. But yeah, so, um, so it's, it, it's the same, it's the same thing. Except you, say like you at the job, you get breaks. You know, you might get a 15 minute morning break and then you get like a half hour, maybe an hour lunch. And then you get another break. And then you break in between breaks. You know, you're not working nonstop. You may stop, you know, from break to break. You know, you may stop and talk to another employee or something like that. You're not working at that moment. You know, you may have to get up and use the bathroom in between breaks or get up and get a drink of water or something. So you're getting breaks in between breaks. Or your body, the organs of your body don't get any breaks like that. You know, there is no, let me stop for 30 seconds so I can, you know, just relax a little bit or catch my breath or anything like that. So your, your organs are working 24-7, right? So the idea behind fasting for me is to, you know, it's, it's my best attempt at giving the organs of my body a break and allowing them to work at a relaxed and comfortable pace not to overwhelm them so and this is this is the the uh, logic behind why I eat the way I eat because um, I'm I've, I've uh, been eating predominantly fruits and vegetables and I juice you know I juice oranges lemons um, I had some tea this morning I juiced a lemon and put in it had some apple cider vinegar and lemon in water um, and I haven't eaten and it's 11 11 it's 11 11 check that out it's 11 11 that's a message but um anyway so I haven't eaten I don't plan on eating for you know a little while and then when I do eat it's probably gonna be like broccoli or peas or quinoa or um, you know something like that maybe peas and carrots uh, it's gonna be something light um, and you know like I said the whole idea behind it is I want to make life easier for my heart my lungs my liver my kidneys all these different systems of the body they have to function I want, I want everything to function perfectly, you know, but everything has to function as intended in order for me to have, you know, a high quality existence in this life, you know, a pain-free, sickness, disease-free existence, you know, um, and so if, you know, body doesn't have a lot to digest you know everything can work at a more relaxed pace everything is more comfortable so although you know they can't take like 10 minutes and 10 minute a 10 minute break and just not work completely I can make its workload much much lighter and um, and thereby you know, like you can stress the organs of your body out too, you know, and, um, but by doing the opposite of stressing my bodily organs out and allowing them to work at a relaxed pace frequently, um, 
that's better for me because you know this is the only body I get you know and this is it I can't I can't trade this body in when it starts or if which you know if this body was to start breaking I can't trade it in and get another one you know it ain't like a car you know like the car start breaking down or whatever you start having problems out of it you know first sign of trouble you know you trade that boy in and get another one you can't do that with your body if your body start breaking down you got to deal with it you got to try to bring it back to life you know um and you know for me it's all about prevention you know i don't want to wait until i'm having complications to you know take good care of myself you know i want to take good care of myself while i'm already doing doing well and while my health is in good shape to keep it like that because i don't like hospitals i don't like having to deal with that entire system um and i don't like the discomfort that comes from you know uh a sickness an illness whatever it is i hey i don't even like having a runny nose or a stuffed up nose it's you know it's annoying to me you know um I don't like coughing. I don't like any type of discomfort, you know. Um, so, you know, this is, you know, your best shot at living. You know, pain-free, disease-free, illness-free existence in this life. Um, I don't believe in age. I don't believe age is a factor in anything. You know, this body that we were given is such a magnificent masterpiece in how it was created. You know, our bodies were created to heal themselves. And um, I believe in every single way. You know, I don't believe there's any sickness or disease that's exempt from that. You know, I don't believe the body was you know, created to heal, um, you know, say, heal a scratch or a cut, you know, a cut on your hand, but um, wasn't designed to heal a cold, you know, or cancer or AIDS or whatever it is, you know, diabetes, like, pick, pick, a, pick a sickness, a disease, whatever, you know believe your body was designed to heal all of it but we have to give the body what it needs in order to function at that level you know and um, you know your immune system requires certain minerals vitamins certain nutrients to function at you know peak performance you know it's just like you know, like, uh, think of your immune system as a fighter, right? Think of it as, an, like, an MMA fighter, right? Um, a fighter has to eat a certain way. It has to, you know, do a certain amount of training to, you know, for when they get to be ready, just to be ready for, when, for the fight, when they get in that ring against an opponent. You know, and so it is with your immune system. You know, uh, your immune system has to, you know, receive certain food, certain minerals, certain nutrients, vitamins, whatever, to function at peak performance. You know, so when an opponent steps into your body or an opponent, an opponent tries to enter your body and take over, you know a certain area you know if you know you take care of your immune system you feeding it what it needs then it could knock that whatever it is right out the box just boom it won't even have a chance to you know to survive and the body the environment 
that you created through how you eat and through fasting, you know, um, your body is, you know, your immune system is ready, you know, and, you know, whatever opponent enters your body to try to take over is not going to last, and, you know, so MMA fighters, man, they have strict diets, they exercise, they have strict training regiments, um, routines, uh, and, you know, that's what's required to win fights, you know, so your immune system fights also, so, you know, think of it as the same way, you know, feed your immune system what it needs to operate at peak performance, you know, um, and it's, it's, you know, I see it the same as with all the organs of the body, you know, everything's fighting, you know, there's, you know, there's always opponents, you know, trying to enter the body, and um, a lot of times what happens is we, we're, instead of feeding, you know, our friend, which is our, you know, our body, our organs, you know, our friends, these are our friends, like we're a team, you know, uh, my heart, my organ, my brain, my liver, my kidneys, all these things, you know, we're on the same team because I need them to function properly in order for me to dwell on this earth. And I like dwelling on the earth. I need, I need all of them to function properly in order for me to be able to enjoy my kids. I need them to function properly in order for me to enjoy this life. You know, in order for me to be able to do things like ride four wheelers and dirt bikes and, you know, like go to a, like a trampoline park and have fun, you know, not having to sit down because I'm in pain, but being able to jump and flip and all these things to be able to run around with, with, uh, you know, like five and six year olds and chase them in the yard, you know, all these things to be able to go to the bathroom on my own and to be able to um, just walk up and down stairs. I like working out to be able to work out like unrestricted, you know, being able to work, I could work out anything. I can't say, you know, you know, I can't really work out my legs because my knees are sore or anything like I can't work out my arms because I got this issue or blah, blah, blah. You know, so my body, my organs, and I, we're a team. And so I want to do everything I can for the team to keep the team on point and operating and functioning at its peak. What a lot of us do though is we feed the enemy. We feed the opponent. And this would be the equivalent of, you know, you have a fight coming up. Again, let's go back to the MMA example. Um, say you have a fight coming up and uh, you go and help the opponent, your, your opponent train. You know, you do things to help your opponent win the fight. You know, you give your opponent tips and pointers and you know, you, you give your opponent equipment, you know, like better equipment that'll help them train. But like you're doing things to help your opponent beat you, which is ridiculous, right? Like no one would ever do that in real life. But this is what we do with our bodies because, you know, the things we eat, everything we eat and drink, everything we take in, we're either feeding sickness or we're feeding disease. And sickness dwells within sickness and disease. It's in all of us. Um, and what I mean by that is there is, you know, I mean, when, when somebody in like their 30s or their 40s um, comes down with diabetes, like where did that come from? Like they lived 30, 40 years without it. How do they have it now? Like, it didn't come from breathing the air. Like, where did that come from? Or somebody comes down, like, with cancer. Like, where did that come from? Well, I mean, this is the way I explain it. It was in you already. And um, all you did was feed it. So, you know, you may have been feeding diabetes for 30 years. And it finally got strong enough to manifest itself. 
you may have been feeding cancer for 20 years or 10 years and it finally got strong enough to manifest itself you know well how are we feeding sickness and disease we feed it through what we eat and what we take into the body you know so if you love sweet things and you eat a lot of sugar for example you know every time you're eating sugar you're feeding diabetes or some other thing you know like sugar is responsible for a lot of a lot of uh, diseases you know um, people like to smoke cigarettes you know and you know when when you're smoking a cigarette you're feeding cancer right you're making it stronger you know at some point is it's probably going to manifest itself um, and it's the same thing like there's no guarantees but you're feeding like even with sugar you know there's no guarantee that you're going to get diabetes or any of the other um, illnesses that are related to you know uh, excessive sugar intake but you definitely could you're positioning yourself for that and you're feeding whatever it is you could be feeding heart disease or all these things you know and so um that's not what we want to do we don't want to feed the enemy you know we want to feed the team and so this is my reasoning behind eating the way I eat and you know my intermittent fasting um so I, I hope that this made sense to you um I, I'll just end with this you know I eat less and I feel great like I feel amazing I have energy before when I was eating just eating throughout the day and um even when I was you know watching what I ate you know I was making like conscious decisions about what I ate and I'm reading labels and looking at ingredients and all these things. I was a much more conscious eater, but I was I was still eating a lot and I was still eating, you know, things that would make the organs of my body work harder. Um, man, I like I could barely make it through the day without napping. Um, so many times I've just been driving, you know, from a job or to a job and I'll be falling asleep behind the wheel like it was really a struggle to make it through the day without taking a nap and you know many times I would take a nap throughout the day at some point and I mean like there there was many times where I didn't even want to take a nap and I just sat down and you know I fell asleep and I'm waking up like four or five hours later um so, um, you know, it, that was just, man, it's a really, okay, she got to be married. If she got, if she driving that, I'm at the Asian market right now, and, you know, yeah, I really got a thing for Asian women, but if she driving that truck, she got to be unavailable. So, back to my video, though, she's really nice to look at, though. I should shoot my shot anyway, but, and if she's still out there after I get done with this video, I am. I'm not scared of her telling me, you know, no. Even if she's just, like, I'm single, but you ugly. It might be a little hard to deal with that one, but I get over it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, um, man, what was I talking about, man? Shoot. I should never start talking about her. This video is more important to me. Um, but yeah, uh, so I know I was talking about feeding the team. Oh, I was talking about how, like, I have so much more energy now. Um, man, and I feel amazing. I feel absolutely amazing. So um, with eating less and eating fruits and veggies and, and um, um intermittent fasting and I'm out